All right, let's put these ideas together and see what happens. Let's take a look at this example. I take the quantity x squared times y to the fifth, and I'm going to cube that whole thing. What am I going to get? Well, let's think about it together. What this means is I'm going to take x squared y to the fifth and multiply it by itself three times. And we know what that equals. That's just, well, I've got x squared y to the fifth, x squared y to the fifth, x squared y to the fifth. So since multiplication is commutative, I can do it in any order I want. I'm going to take the x squared multiplied by this x squared multiplied by that x squared. So we know what we do there. We actually add the exponents. So I see 2 plus 2 plus 2. So that's going to be x to the 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is actually 2 times 3, right? Because it's 2 3 times. What about the y's? I've got y to the fifth times y to the fifth times y to the fifth. I'm multiplying, and we have the same base, so we add. So I have 5 plus 5 plus 5. There are three fives, and so I see y to the 5 times 3. Check it out. I see this equals x to the 6th, y to the 15th. But that's not what's important. The thing I want us to look at is this fact right here, which inspires the following very cool fact. The power of a product property. And it says that if you have a and b being any non-zero real numbers, and n is any integer, 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 then the quantity AB all raised to the n will actually equal A to the n times B to the n. And that's exactly what we see here. Because this, in fact, equals x squared cubed by the property we already saw times y to the fifth cubed. So if I have a product cubed, it actually equals the product of the cubes themselves individually. Weird, but correct, because you can write it all out. So let's try an example together and see this in action. In fact, we might just try more than an example, but we'll see. We'll see how you behave. Let's simplify this expression. So by the power of a product property, I'm multiplying lots of things together, and then I'm cubing the entire quantity. So I can just cube each factor. So this equals 4 cubed multiplied by w squared cubed multiplied by y cubed multiplied by z to the fifth cubed. We can simplify further. First of all, what is 4 cubed? That's 4 times 4, which is 16 times 4 is 64. And what do we do here? Well, since I'm raising a power to another power, I multiply the exponents. So I see w to the 2 times 3, which is 6, y cubed z to the, and again, I'm raising a power to a power, so I multiply, and I see 15. And so I see that this simplifies to 64w to the 6y cubed times z to the 15th power. And there's a wonderful way of expressing this complicated expression like that. How about this last one? The quantity h squared plus k all cubed. Now, it's great. It's great to say, well, I know what this is. This equals h squared cubed plus k cubed. It's great to say that, but it turns out that's really, really wrong. It's one of the classic mistakes that we can make in algebra. Because this formula expresses a product that's raised to a power. This is actually a sum. And in fact, there is no such rule. In fact, this is actually false. So this is actually wrong. We have to be very careful. There's no way to apply this power of product property. Since we don't have a product, we have a sum. And so in this case, nothing can be said about this. All we could do is actually multiply this sum out three times, and do lots of multiplying, and get a really complicated sort of expression. There's no slick trick. But if we have a product of terms, and we raise that entire product to a power, then, in fact, we can use this great 
great property of exponents. Congratulations, thinking about exponents. Lots of properties, easy to get confused. When in doubt, write it out. That will always lead you to the appropriate and correct formula. I'll see you soon.